give me your hands? I don't even do this anymore. Your brother, I'm telling you, he's, you know, he's really for real. You can make money doing this. For a while, I had an office, a website, newspaper articles, even had a book written about him. So what happened? I couldn't cope. Can I ask you a question? The job I had before was as a psychic. Do the work and you'll go by. What do you think happens when we die? Send a hope upon a word. I recognize you. You're that psychic. I have news for you. I don't do it anymore. I give you my word, I won't tell anyone. You have a duty to do it because you have a gift. It's not a gift, Billy. It's a curse. I think you experienced death. It's called a five-word review. And oh man, that trailer is misleading. Now I haven't seen a trailer that, that, that was as misleading as the one for Hugh After is since I saw the movie Nine. I'm talking about the number nine, the animated one by Tim Burton. It was packed with action and soundtrack by uh, Coheed and Cambria, and it was just a bunch of explosions and all this epic stuff. But then you get to the movie and it turns out that all the action that was in the trailer... That's the only action in the entire movie. Like, maybe you'd get five seconds more action than what you would see in that specific clip. Um, and I don't think I did a five-word review. No, I did. I, it was in my ten-minute review thing where I did a bunch of reviews at once. And, man, that was a terrible, terrible movie. I was hugely disappointed. And um, hereafter, although I'm not entirely disappointed, I just got a completely inaccurate view of what this movie was going to be about because that trailer was incredibly misleading. Now, when it picks up in the trailer and it shows that tsunami scene, um, everything before that is very accurate um, to the feel of the movie. Um, it's very slow, it's very long, very dramatic and sad, but it's, it's not a bad movie by any means. But then once you get to the tsunami and everything after that, you think, oh, it's going to be some epic... Uh, climactic thing in which the conflict has something to do with some man who has to cross over to the other side and you know the fate of the world will be decided because there's this disaster and the whole world's gonna be a disaster and he has to save people and shit and no 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 see that tsunami scene that's the beginning of the movie that happens within three minutes of the beginning of the movie and then um, after that there's absolutely no action, if that's what you want to call it, or disasters or anything, for the entire movie. It's just it's just something that happens. It's a plot device so that one of the three main characters in the story can die temporarily, um, experience what the other side is like, and then be brought back to life. So the movie revolves around three different characters, Matt Damon, um, the woman you saw who died, and then the little boy. Uh, three separate stories that eventually intertwine at the end of the movie, and it's just it's just three different stories of grieving, which by itself, you know, it's a it's a good movie, it's a good idea, um, it's a very simple idea. Um, I just had such drastically different expectations for what this movie was going to be about that it really really let me down, and I really didn't like it. And I think maybe if I saw it another time in the future, uh, with the correct expectations. 
I'd like it. I I was I think for the at least the first half, maybe the first two thirds of the movie, I was expecting it to pick up and get more dramatic, and then finally I realized, oh, okay, this is a slow movie. This is not an epic movie. Um, so I guess yeah, a good way to put it is I thought it would be epic, and the trailer makes it look epic, but that is not what this is at all. This is a very very slow, long, dramatic piece. Um, a good one at that, but I just didn't expect that. So. Um, let's see, I talked about how it felt, I talked about the opening sequence. Oh, also with the flood, um, you, I guess you can't really tell with that trailer, and you, I don't know if you'd be able to tell on a TV, but in the theater where everything's magnified, you know, times 50 compared to a TV, that flood scene looked terrible. The water effects were just awful, absolutely terrible, and the, the only only reason the flood was there was a plot was as a plot device for the woman you see in the poster for her to die and it just felt so unnecessary why didn't they just have her like fall off a building accidentally or like get hit by a car or get stabbed and then she dies and she gets revived the flood the only purpose the flood has in the entire movie and it's such a big dramatic epic scene um the only purpose it has is for this woman to conveniently die and then come back to life. So I thought it's it's just really misleading, and I didn't like how misleading it was. So, um, yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about The Flood. Um, Matt Damon is the lead, and he gives a great performance, I thought. He's, um, as you can probably tell from the trailer, he's a psychic, a real psychic, who uh, cannot handle the stresses of, you know, of all these people who uh, come up to him and want readings, he just doesn't like it anymore. And um, he's been trying to quit for a while, but his brother is trying to take advantage of it and say, "Here, we got a we got business ideas with this. Let's make a bunch of money off of it." And I don't know if they're trying to make the brother out to be this bad guy, but he wasn't. He wasn't really good. He wasn't really bad. He was just kind of a dick. Like. It's an understandable dickish thing, though. Like, I mean, if your brother had a super awesome talent that no other people on the planet have, or maybe few other people on the planet have, wouldn't you want to try to profit from that? I mean, it's understandable that he does this shit. So I don't know if they're trying to make him to be a bad guy, because he's just a very neutral character that adds nothing to the story, except to put more pressures on Matt Damon's character. Because Matt Damon is trying to escape this past of being a psychic, but his brother keeps putting it on him. <clears throat> um... Another thing, the woman that the you see in the poster, the other main character, um, is French. Why? Why did they make her French? It just seemed unnecessary and inconvenient, because I had to read more subtitles. Um, I think what they were trying to do with, with it is show, you know, the randomness that events can occur. Whoops, sorry, phone vibrating. They were trying to display the randomness at which events can occur. Um, 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 because these three characters are completely unrelated in the beginning of the movie, and they finally all intertwine at the end. One of them's American, another British, and the woman is French. And I just thought that was... I mean, I get it. Like, I, I didn't like it. And I guess it's not a bad thing, and I can't hold it against the movie, but I just didn't like the fact that she was French. And that could just fit in with the whole thing of me not liking the movie because my expectations were so different. Um, and that's definitely... Well, I don't know. Maybe that is the movie's fault. It's the, it's the producer's fault who ever made the trailer. Um, I don't know. There's not much else I can say except that do not go into this expecting an epic drama. This is a slow, long, very drawn-out drama that's not bad, but it's not exciting at all. Especially the flood scene. It didn't really help because the flood looked really bad visually. Um, so, oh, one good note, though. I thought the ending was great. I loved the very end of the film. Um, it ends with a romantic twist. And, um, one thing I, one of my least favorite things about romantic slash romantic comedies is that after the the couple, you know, finally hook up in the end and everything's all happy and great, um, they give us this epilogue that we don't need to show us, okay, they've hooked up. What else do we need other than that? Oh, we need to know that they bought a house and now they have a car and they have a family and they resolve things between each other for sure. It is epilogues in romantic movies are completely unnecessary unless you're setting up for a sequel. 
And romantic movies don't need sequels, so they're just completely unnecessary in the first place. Um, and this one, the couple, they just hook up. And then the camera does this crane shot, zooms out from them, goes up in the sky, and it's over. I loved the ending. I loved how they just, just cut it. Because you know that everything works out. You know that they're happy together. You know that these two people, their goals have been met. Why do we need to see anything else? And Clint Eastwood obviously realized that. So kudos to him for doing that with a romantic film. Um, so overall, my five words for hereafter would have to be slow, misleading, long, although it is sweet at times. The ending, I did love the ending, and um, I actually don't have a fifth word. So I'm just going to say good, because it's one of those neutral movies, you know. It's definitely, by no means, Clint Eastwood's best, best work, um, but it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's just completely different from what I saw, or expected, excuse me. So, um, yeah. Hereafter, if you're big on really slow, long dramas, check it out. It's not bad, otherwise... You probably want to avoid it, because it's not great. It's just good. Alright, so I'm going to go see Skyline tonight, and hopefully I'll have a review up sometime before midnight, and if not, I'll definitely have one up tomorrow. Alright, see you guys, and as always, thank you for your time. Goodbye.